can't say Happy Thanksgiving two days after Thanksgiving. So we say welcome to Advent Sunday as we start making our way towards Christmas. And what a wonderful thing the way this Thanksgiving holiday and as we look forward to Christmas is going to tie into today's sermon. Someone just asked me a moment ago, what are you talking about today? And I said, love. He's like, what does love have to do with it? I said, that couldn't have been a better prescript because love has everything to do with it. In fact, 1 John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who do, does not love his brother abides in death. Mm, that's pretty deep, huh? Listen to Eugene Peterson's paraphrase. It says, The way that we know we've been transferred from death to life is that we love our brothers and sisters. Anyone who doesn't love is as good as dead. And so my, my, my title for today was The Death of My, whether it be the death of my mother, the death of my brother, the death of my ministry, the death of my job, whatever it is, there ought to be something with all of us. And for no other reason, when Paul says, take off the old man and put on the new man, he's saying what? He's saying that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we accept the fact that, yes, he walked upon the earth, yes, we are sinners, yes, he died on a cross, but more importantly, he rose early on Sunday morning and he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, then that's when we've accepted him. And there should be a transference from that not knowing him to knowing him. And so he's saying, you know when you've passed from death to life, when you love your brothers and sisters. So the disciples ask, which one is the, the greatest command here? And Jesus says, to love me with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul, and to love your brethren as yourself. He doesn't say that to love me with all your heart and mind and soul is the greatest, greatest, and then come down to say love your brother as yourself as the next greatest. He says, these are, these are, both of them simultaneously, you know, lateral kind of speaking. And so isn't that powerful that the God that is responsible for the sun coming up and the going down of the same, the God that is responsible for being all present, all powerful, all knowing, all everything, says also with that same level of love that you give to that all knowing, all powerful person is the same level of love I want you to give to your brethren. That's pretty deep. And here's where it gets to be tricky. This is what we talked about this morning. Because they're kind of like looking at me sideways. And some of them, you know, we're still in this mully cully kind of mode because the Washington home is going to be closing. And I'm saying, if you don't have joy in your heart, if you don't have peace in your heart, if you don't have the ability to be patient, if you don't have that fruit of the Spirit, it is because you have not transferred from death to life. And how do you know this? You know that. It's not me, the pastor, the minister, the <laughs> chaplain, whatever they're going to call me here, that has to tell you that. The Word of God says, we know, we know that we have passed from death to life. That's to insinuate that the way that you behave in life, the way that you decide or not decide to love, is going to be responsible for the way that you feel in life. Whether it be a sadness or a joyfulness, it comes from you. And so to break that down, what does that mean? In other words, it means that people, we had this long discussion a couple of weeks ago in our class about joy and happiness. What's the difference in the two? Happiness is predicated on your situation and what's happening with you. Joy is your way of looking at things. It's understanding that the Bible says, I will be with you at all times. It's understanding that you rejoice in this day because this is the day that I have made. So it is saying that I have commanded you to love your neighbor as yourself. I am telling you that this is what I need you to do. If this is what God is commanding us to do, then this is something that, first of all, can be done. This isn't something that you feel, in other words. Love is not the emotion that people think it is. Love, in the sense of the believer, is a decision. Either you love or you don't love. And in this particular case, you are going to know when you are or are not loving. Because when you're sad, when you're anxious, when you're fretful, when you're fearful, when you're discouraged, when you're hopeless, it is because you're not loving your brother and sister. In the death of my mother, in the death of my job, in the death of my ministry, however you feel, it is predicated on the fact that you let that thing, that death, 
overconsume you, and if that overconsumed you, then you allowed the command, the greatest command that God has given to you, to decrease in your life. Because if the greatest command is that you love your brother and sister as yourself, and at the same time you're loving God with all your might, your heart, and your strength, then your heart doesn't have a whole lot of time to be over here dwelling and wallowing in the death of whatever. So when we're obedient to the word of God, when we are doing what God has commanded us to do, then we will determine our situation. So it says, you will know whether or not you pass from death to life. So what is death? Death, the wages of sin are death. In that, we are separated from God. When we're separated from God, there is nothing. It is Jesus crying out, why have you forsaken me? And so we are going to know that. You're going to know that. How are you going to know that? Because when you're not joyful, when you're not peaceful, when you don't have the ability to be patient with others, when you're not gentle, when you're not kind to others, it is because you're not loving your brother and sister. You are experiencing death. You are experiencing the separation. You are experiencing the wages of sin. When you have life, when you are peaceful, when you are joyful, I can guarantee you it's because you're loving your brother and your sister. And so that's the first thing, that you will know it. Why? Because God created us in the likeness of his image. And what image is that? It is love. When the word of God says, God is my power and my strength. God is love. God is synonymous with love. So what is your power? What is your strength? Love is your power and your strength. So if something's happened in your life and you don't feel like you have power over the situation, it is because you're not loving if something's happening and you feel that you just can't get it off of you, you're burdened and you're weakened by it, it is because you don't have the strength. What strength is that? It says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Who is Christ? Christ is love. Love strengthens us. Love will get you through whatever you're going through. Love has the ability to do anything and everything. So when there's that complicated person, when there's that difficult person, when there's a complicated situation, all we have to do is focus on those two commands. I'm loving God with all of my heart. And what pleases God? What pleases God? What makes God the happiest? His expression of love was our creation. He created us so that he would have an object for his expression of love. And he wanted that object to be able to express that love back to him. Nobody wants to be married to somebody that doesn't love them. Nobody wants to be married to somebody that they had to force to love them. And so it is expressing that love and knowing that that love is reciprocated. And that is why God put us here so that he would have an opportunity to give, to give his only begotten son for the object of his love. That is us. And in return, he simply asks that we love him back. How difficult is it to love the one that can do anything and everything? How difficult is to love the person that gave his only begotten son for us? How difficult is it for us to love the person that keeps Order. The reason that we haven't frozen to death is because we are exactly where we ought to be in proximity to the sun. Don't you just love live video? Thank you, God. It is love. It is love. It is saying that, you know, you're going to video, make sure that your phone is off, but it's like, it's okay. Because I am gentle, I am loving, I am kind, I am patient, I am super patient. And it's just love. It's because I love you because you're taking your time to make sure that people will hear the word of God. It is love. Love can just, it will keep us at a peaceful state. It will keep us loving others. Love. Be the object of love. Express love. Okay? And so it says here, because we love the brethren, is when we will either feel sorrowful, we'll be experiencing death, or we feel joyful, we'll be experiencing life. We have control over that. Out of all the things that we don't have control over in life, we have control over everything that's really going to be happening to us. Why? Because we're being obedient to God's word. You know, God is so wonderful in all that he's already given us. What else could he give us? When we look at this Thanksgiving season and we talk about thankful, thankful, thank I'm so thankful to God. You think about all the great things that he's given us? What could be better than that? But yet, God says in Psalms, he says, if you obey my commandments, I'll make you a special treasure. Do you not, oh, I, I don't know about you, I already feel like I'm a special treasure just because he chose me. I already feel like I'm a special treasure just because his son is preparing a room for my eternity. I already feel like a special treasure because I have all that I need because of him. But yet, he says, if you obey my commandments. And what does that say? It says that he knew that though he has given us his only begotten son, though he's given us the promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, though he's given us everything, he's the great I am, he knew that we would be obedient to him. 
So he says, for those few, for that select, I'll make you a special treasure. Just be obedient to my commands. And then he also goes on to say, if you don't, if you don't obey my commands, then you don't really love me. And so when we find ourselves in a situation where we're sad, where we're fretful, could it be because we know that we're in death? Because we know that we are as good as dead? It is that thing inside of us. Because we're not reciprocating the love that God desires from us and he created us. So it is the reason that all of this works succinctly the way that it's supposed to work. We're going to feel like that because this is what we were created to be. Loving, kind individuals. And when we're not, we don't feel like we're, something's wrong. And that's that sadness. Sure, we can blame it on the fact that we lost our job, that we had this or this or that happen. But in essence, what it is, is that we're losing our focus. And we're being disobedient. Because even in the loss of the job, even in the loss of the marriage, even in the loss of the child, in the loss of the parent, we are commanded to love God with all of our heart and our mind and soul. To let God be the center of our life. And that means I'm talking to you, God. I'm praying with you, God. I am seeking your will, God. And God's constant will is that we love our neighbor. And if we opened our eyes, there's always a neighbor that is going to be in need of something that we have to give. There's always going to be someone that's hurting. There's always going to be someone that's in need. And when we are supplying that need, when we are serving, loving in the kingdom, then all will be well. It is so good to have the revelation because it makes life so simple. You know, this thing that we say is so difficult. We're in the world, but we have to live this way and that way. And, you know, it makes it hard and we can't be perfect. And, you know, sin is all around us. It really isn't that complicated if we have a heart of love. And so it goes on to say that he who does not love his brother abides in death. Anyone who doesn't love is as good as dead. And thank God that, that he promises that if we confess of our sins, then he'll be faithful and just to cleanse us of all our righteousness. But that is why we must be conscious to always be asking for forgiveness. So that we keep ourselves in that hedge of protection. That we keep ourselves centered about God else we will be alive but dead. And that is where the sadness and, and, and the lack of joy and the lack of every day being a day of Thanksgiving. So if you want every day to be a day of Thanksgiving, if you just want to be filled with the joy because this is the day that God has created independent of my situation or my circumstance, I'm going to be out there and I'm going to be looking to love and to give love. To smile upon others, to ask others, is there something that I can do? And no, it's not going to be reciprocated. No, you can't be looking to see what they're going to do for you. It's all about being obedient to God. It makes life simple. That's it. I'm done. Just like that. That's what love has to do with it. What's Tina say? Yes, love got to do with it. Everything, everything, everything. Praise be to God. We love you. God bless you. See you next week. Hold on to that. We love you. <laughs> we'll see you next week.